national anthem, please. Mr. 
Your Excellency, Mr. Peter B, the Chairman, Labour Party, all of the protocol of self. Ladies and gentlemen, you are all welcome once again. Uh, so, you'll be hearing me maybe using also sometimes mixing my speech here. Um, this time, uh, I want to briefly give time to the organizers of the support groups, the leaders, to give their brief speech. Okay, we are going to start with House to House Concert Manchester. Please, if you are here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kate Kudodo, and I'm one of the coordinators of House to House Manchester. We want to use this opportunity to welcome you, Your Excellency. And by the grace of God, our next president of our dear nation, Nigeria, to Manchester. Our brethren from London and the distinguished men and women who have made today a reality to say thank you and God bless you. The vision of Manchester House to House is for good governance equity and obedience to the rule of law by all Nigerians. We decided to join this support movement of obedience after in-depth study okay, yeah, yeah. Of, your, of your antecedents and track record as evidence in your eight years as the governor of Anambra State. Besides, after diligent study of all the presidential candidates, we know we are the only one who has Nigeria at heart. For this cause, Your Excellency, we know as Nigerians in the diaspora that we will not be able to vote. So what we've done, hence our interest and focus is to sensitize and mobilize the Nigerian voters to vote for the right person, which is you, right. Mr. Peter Obi. To achieve this mandate, we as a group have committed to produce campaign materials to be distributed in the homeland. We have representatives and coordinators in all 36 states and the FCT. Through these coordinators, through these coordinators, we distribute materials for the sensitization of Nigerian voters. So so far, we have covered 13 local governments in Nasarawa State, 20 local governments in Kano, 10 local governments in. We have materials ready for Kogi, but unable to commence work there due to the flood currently ravaging the area. Our heart goes out to people of Kogi. We are sorting ways to help families affected in this area before com commencing campaign work there. We have photo and video coverage of all these events, and we'll be giving it out to anyone who is interested to see our work and support this cause. Finally, Your Excellency, we want to appeal to you and also remind you to be committed to the vision of a new Nigeria. As you have always preached everywhere you go, on your mandate, it will be bestowed. Thank you. In my village, they call me sharp sharp. <laughs> Because we respect time. Uh, 
the next person I'm going to call is Dr. Michael, my global coordinator. Jim. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, His Excellency. Thank you, the National Chairman. And thank you, His Excellency. Oh and all thank, you. thank you, everyone that is here. Um, Peter will be present your global network. Um, it was then when Dad came to help out, we now change it to Peter and Yusuf Dati Ahmed Presidential Global Network, PPGN. Um, PPGN is one of the support group that saw what God wants to do with Nigeria, um, especially when it came to 2023 presidential election. And the only unifier that came up became Peter Obi. And then with the name Peter Obi, we could see people from Kano going into the 44 local governments of Kano State, doing grassroots work, mentioning a man from Southeast. It doesn't matter whether he's from Southeast or from Northwest or Southwest, but a unifier for Nigeria. And that is why I could call Hafiz Bello. He will be there telling me what he's doing to see that Nigeria is unified. And then with the Labour Party doing the great works, we get to Oyo State, people from Southwest. We could see a young man donating his office and say, come and use it for the sake of unifying Nigeria for what we are getting into. But this unifying Nigeria needs to get down to the grassroots, to the 176 1,846 polling units in Nigeria, we need to see ourselves united, see ourselves doing that good job, ensuring that everybody there is voting for the unity that Nigeria is bringing. And that is being brought by Peter Obi and the Labour Party as the vehicle. But one thing we were looking at is that this vehicle, that is Labour Party, needs fuel and needs oil to be able to function so that we'll get to our destination. And that is part of the reasons we are here. We are here to put fuel, put oil in this vehicle, and ensure that this unifier takes us to the destination. And we were looking, actually looking at the, looking at the, the, the whole process of that unifying, we noticed that we need some digital app that could help us sanitize, sensitize people. And we made some research and got numbers of more than 96 million Nigerians who had registered to vote. We have their numbers, we have their polling units, we want to design that thing that will make them hear the voice of our principal say to them, go and vote for me. We want to market them to SMS, texting them in the morning, in the evening, telling them that they need to unify to rescue Nigeria. So that's part of the things we're looking at and thinking that this meeting tonight will be a catalyst to achieving that and also monitoring the vote that's going to be casted. And that unity will be us and Nigeria will be a rescued place. Thank you very much as we join together. Please and please, when I call you, respect time. Our president will live here by eight, so we need to respect time, please. Uh, next on the list, I'm calling on Dr. Namdi, POSN coordinator. His Excellency, the Labour Party Chairman, and the President in the waiting, Mr. Peter Odin. I want to say a very big thank you for coming here to visit us. It's a great privilege. Um, I'm here to say just a summary of what we have been doing. We are P2B Support Network, 
UK. Um, we've done quite a lot of things in Nigeria. Just like the previous scholars, uh, previous uh, speakers have said, there's a reason why P2B, Dati, this beautiful combination, there's a reason why the Dutch scholars are really, 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 really interested in this uh, movement. It's a paradigm shift whose time has come. And I want to use this opportunity to just say a little, resonate with one of your campaign promises. Moving Nigeria from consumption to production. It's, it's a statement that resonates with me and I'll give you a, a little before I actually, you know, I hope I've spent a little time. I was involved in a manufacturing firm in Nigeria that's supposed to be a windfall of, a windfall of investment. We pioneered a single cell drug in Nigeria called Nikosan. And because of policies, that manufacturing firm collapses. And that's why some of us are here. So when you say from production, consumption to production, it shows that that's one of the major things that Nigeria is lacking. And uh, that is why you see this very movement within the diaspora. So what is now, the, for what are we doing as a POC and We have sponsored a lot of um, activities in Nigeria. One of them is that we sponsored the Middle Belt uh, Forum Conference. We also sponsored a, a conference uh, in Asaba. And right now our project is to make sure there's obedience in every local government world in Nigeria. And that is the current thing we are doing at the moment. So we want to say thank you very much for honoring this invitation. And we'll make sure we work tirelessly to ensure that uh, come 2023, you become the Nigerian president. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, finally, Dr. Tim Opeta, Coordinator UK Coalition. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, His Excellency. Thank you, Party Chairman, um, Comrade Julius Abure. Thank you for coming. We appreciate everyone on the high table. Uh, my name is Tim Obeta. I'm not a doctor. Okay, <laughs> let me just correct that before it goes out to the media. I'm a finance person. I um, want to thank you for honoring us today. Um, I heard the coalition, myself and a few other people, and uh, the rally you saw in London was organized by us. We assembled a team of 23 different groups in the UK. And uh, people who travel from far and wide. Can I ever say, can we please put our hands together? Those of you who travel from Manchester, from Leeds, from Hull, from Essex, different parts of England, assembled in London, and that news, I mean, on the first four hours, we got over three million impressions on the internet. That's to show you that OB is a movement that cannot be stopped. And when he wins, I didn't say if, I said when he wins, when, because we know he is the next president of Nigeria, we will see Nigeria move from a place of lost hope. No, let's leave consumption. The hope is gone. And I told someone when I entered here this evening, whatever happens in Nigeria next year will never be the same. And that's why he must win. When I say Obidati, when I say Obidati, I want you to say a new Nigeria is possible. Obidati. request to you. I don't know where he gets his strength from, but please pray for him. I don't know where his strength comes from. Please pray for him. The evil one will not see him. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Um, His Excellency, I want you to know that we are praying for you. We have prayer groups holding all the time, hourly, holding prayers that God will strengthen you and keep you and shield you, that the mandate he has given you, nothing will stop it in Jesus' name. I'm going to call on the national chairman of the Labour Party. And I want us to stand up and give this great man 
comrade Julius Abure a resounding clap because this man has gone over and above what you see taking place here. It takes a man of strength, a man of tenacity to do this. We celebrate you, sir. We celebrate your humility and we want you, I want to give him the microphone to take over and introduce the man of the moment. Thank you very much, sir. Let's put our hands together. Let's keep clapping. You can't stop clapping. You just can't stop clapping. Thank you so much, sir. No, for SNSC, our own presidential candidates, the man of the moment, the game changers in the political atmosphere in Nigeria, the man of the people. Do I want to start? Okay. Please sit down. Sit down, please. Please sit down. Sit down. No, I'm working for the committee. I want to recognize other members of the Centralage, uh, the UK chapter chairman of the uh, Labour Party, and all others that have accompanied me to be here. First, I want to appreciate all the groups here for the beautiful work you'll be doing. I want to appreciate you profusely. The work you are doing here is, is resonating in Nigeria, and the feedback is tremendous. You've been doing a very beautiful job, even though you are not going to be able to vote. But I know that some of you will vote and will join us in the campaign. I've got that feedback. But the work you are doing from here is having a lot of effects in Nigeria. And I want to stay here to appreciate the beautiful work you are doing. I have seen the passion, I've seen the commitment. I have seen that you already converted uh, because uh, our people used to say that uh, uh, those who are converted you don't need the sermon. Mm. Those who need the sermon are those who are yet to be converted. But it is sufficient to say clearly that the country is not working, the country is decaying, the economy has failed. Politics have failed, yes. security have broken down, yes. all aspects of life hmm? of Nigeria is gone. Zero. Mm. And therefore, the decision you have taken, the decision we've all taken that we need to rescue the country is a patriotic duty that we need to take. And there's no other time to take it. The time is now. If we miss this next year, I, because of press, I don't want to say Nigeria would have gone. But I'm happy that Nigerians have taken over this. They have taken the bull by the horn. Because the momentum we are gathering today, what we've seen today, has never happened in the history of the country. Yes. This is, this is the first time people are keen into a political movement, people are contributing their money, people are... I say so because PDP and APC and other political parties are owned by money banks. That is why competent and credible people can never emerge from that process. Yes. That's right. That was why His Excellency could not emerge from that process irrespective of his character, his competence, his pedigree, and his role modeling to people. Valentine Nozito couldn't make it a PDP because there are no stuff of that group. And the reason is because money banks have taken over the process and they therefore dictate who takes the ticket? And you know what? They send their house boys, they send their drivers, they send their mechanics to be governors, to be in the Senate, and to be in the House of Representatives. And that is why the country will never.
never work. So long as PDP and APC remain in government under the current disposition, it will never, never work. Wow. And that was why for us in Labour Party, we decided that we are going to have a people-oriented party. Yes. Yes. Party that will be driven by the people, that will follow the mandate of the people, that will follow the dictate of the people, and that will choose the popular candidates. And that was why we followed Peter Obi and made sure that he won the presidential support. <laughs> and that's why we also ensured because we know that Peter Obi cannot do it alone. That's right. If he becomes president with us of red members, with us senators and others, he will face a lot of challenges. The energies we would have channeled into rescuing and working for the country will be channeled into fighting and fighting and fighting. And therefore, that's why we have opened a platform to credible Nigerians to technocrats, to professionals that has what it takes to take over the country, take over government, and reposition the country for greatness. Our country has what it takes to be a great country. Yes. The human and natural resources is there. Yes. What has been lacking is proactive, vibrant, and articulate, articulate leadership that we harness our resources and put the country on the path of growth and development. And today we have found that man mm. who can change the narrative. That's right. And that is no other person. It's not because it's my presidential candidate that I'm saying it. The facts are clear. Mm. The facts are clear. Mm. In terms of competence, in terms of capacity, in terms of credibility, there is no other person that has it. He is the only one that has it. The other two leading presidential candidates, whether Atiku or Tinubu, name them, cannot give us anything. And therefore, I want to appeal to you that you should not rest on your orders because it is not over, not until it is over. I know that you have been working so hard. We have been working so hard. I don't sleep five hours a day well done. because of the enormous responsibility and work. You know, the Labour Party was a small party. With Peter Obi coming to join, it has become a movement. It has become a mega party. Yes. And that entrusted on us huge responsibility to organize, reorganize, and reposition so that we can win. And therefore, none of us should rest on our oars. We should not be discouraged by what we hear or what we see. Because the devil is there. The forces of darkness that do not want Nigeria to come to the limelight are still there. And they are liars. And therefore, they may want to discourage you. I want to appeal to you yes. that we must be courageous. Amen. We must continue in this fight. Amen. We must continue in this struggle. Amen. Till victory is Sure. I want you to join me to sing the labor song. <laughs> there is victory for us in the struggle for Nigeria. There is victory for us for On this note, let me, with all humility and with all sense of responsibility, invite His Excellency.
Please be seated. Obedience in action. Please, can we be seated? Can we be seated, please? Oh no! 
those on the high table, you are duly recognized. I don't know if you that are here, not the And I'll thank you for the sacrifice of your time. Sacrifice you're here because you care about my journey. You're here because you believe in your country. Yes. That is why you're here. But unfortunately, your country is going through a very difficult time today. Things are not working. I do tell you so. It is not working. Today, all you hear in Nigeria is bad news. One form of banditry, one form of criminality, is not transpired as a fragile nation. Fragile nation is when you're no longer in control of your territory and when you're no longer in control of your economy. That's where we find ourselves. And it is going worse every day. We have, of course, the highest number of people in poverty, in the war, everybody knows that. All of you knows that. There's no problem with Nigeria that cannot, you don't know. We have the highest out of school children, we have the highest youth unemployment, the list is on and on and on. How are we going to solve this? Because the problem. Because this, why do we arrive there? It is cumulative effect of leadership failure over the years. The leaders have not done what we're supposed to do. And that's been our crisis. And we need to manage this crisis. So, so next year we are about to do an election. We need to start the last this. What are we going to do? It's not just enough to say we that as I listen to all the support groups say yes. And I thank you. I thank God door to door, PSN, I thank all of you for what you're doing. But in doing this, there's the only thing that I've learned in the past is I'm not taking time to scrutinize our leaders, those who are coming to serve us. We've not taken time to listen to them. We've not taken time to look at their past. So we are about 18 of us contesting today. 18 of us is going to tell you a story. Fantastic stories. Very true stories. With Queen's English, qualified for anything. <laughs> Wherever I go, the first thing people want to do is to, why don't you introduce me? Why don't you say about your, your CV? Why don't you talk about this and everything? I was in Oxford yesterday. I go to everywhere. Every day. I only came back to the UK yesterday <laughs> from the US. In the US, I was at Saturday. This is my second trip overseas. That first one, I was in New York on Sunday. On Monday, I was in Chicago. On Tuesday, I was in Detroit. On Wednesday, I was in Dallas. On Thursday, I was in Boston. And really from Boston, from where I was in the event, I went to the airport. I arrived in the UK yesterday. From the airport, I went to the
way to do it is to change that place. So that even if you are running away, at least you hard work here. Yeah. So you can even enjoy it. Yeah. Have peace. But now if you if you wake up in the morning and see messages from your people, you're even scared to open your WhatsApp your phone. Because if you open, you have 10 messages. 11 is send one. Sit down, you're blocking me. You can't change it. That's why. We're talking about changing the place. It is not this because things are getting bad. The question is, what is this problem that cannot be solved? Is it, is it a rocket science? I ask you people, is it rocket science to provide security? I make speech every day. I say, what is this? That's not a rocket science of it. What we need, what is the be that is going to provide? We've said that our first priority, I don't need to tell you about the problem again, is dealing with the issue of security, of life and property. And everybody will tell you, how? Well, I might not give you me to me details. I've said it repeatedly. We will deal with the issue of security decisively. Yes, we will make it responsive. We'll make it responsible. And what does it We'll make it responsible and responsible. Responsible that we're going to deal with the issue head on. And somebody has to be responsible. And if it doesn't deliver, Fire. 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 I'm kidnapped. This is my brother. They have a phone. They are phoning my brother to pay money. They are communicating with my brother. And I'm kidding about what is going to be. And even if I'm sick, they will call a doctor. So everybody knows where I am. I said, Mr. President. <laughs> Because once you use this thing called fraud today, everybody knows where you are. In today's world, there's technology. You use technology to find crime. In today's world, you can't give such a school. It's unacceptable. You deal with it, it's unacceptable. So let nobody kill you. You are in Manchester. They have local police in Manchester. They have regional police. They have national police. Why can't we have it in Nigeria? You said you want state police. People are arguing. What is wrong with people protecting themselves? I was governor for 80 years. We have community security agencies. So you can deal with it. It's not simple. It's not an issue. Today, so I don't know a pet country that is not missing out of our obligation. Part of it is because I want it to be stolen. None of you here can steal oil. No, no, no. Oil is not gross. You can't put it in your bag. You can decide to take a can of this drink and put it in your bag. Or not oil. For you to steal oil, a ship has to come in and look at it. No ship can come into your territorial waters unless your own security agencies give them permission. Mm. Yes, wow. When they load, they can't leave unless they give them permission. And two, every ship in the world is a number and you can know where they are. And they have buyers. So it is only people in government that stay on you.
because of such. Ours is just because still and other problems. And we're running a good deficit. And people are still in our money. And we have millions of people who don't know where the next bill will come from. And people are still in our money. Our deficit is full. A deficit about 40, 50, or 60 percent. But just to compare <laughs> January to April, your country earned about 1.6 trillion and spent about 4. Point something trillion. Oh my God. Yes, in two months we lost. Even when we are not going to get out this year, because when we share the river. In two months, we lost almost three trillion. In July, our production was one million eighty-three thousand. We are supposed to have total production of one point eight million, because that's the whole back. They've even increased it. But I'm using one point eight that they gave us initially. We were losing 17 points, 100, 717 days all throughout July. It came to about 22 million, 227 thousand dollars, which is when we multiply by 110, it was 2 billion, 444, 45 million dollars. That's what we lost in one month in July. If you start to, that's dollars. If you multiply with 550 naira, which is a moderate rate, it's about 1 trillion, 344 billion, 750 million dollars. That's what we lost in one month. In month of August, it was worse. And nobody thinks about it. And we're all here keeping quiet. Our millions of unemployed youth, and according to a poverty record, we have 80 million people living in poverty. In August, we lost one, what I said now. That means even if you want to, if government is serious, is it not pipeline? All of us will be running the pipeline. <laughs> Since we don't eat and everything is missing, we will not be conscious of it in the background. We have subsidy, which you can have as an organized crime. A subsidy, we call the very subsidy, is more than the money we pay in education, in health, and fighting poverty combined. Why not? We don't know anything. We don't know. So these are things we need to deal with. We need to deal with the issue of corruption. People stealing our money. It's the biggest tragedy. So if you get a system where you secure the country today, remember what I said. First priority is to secure the country. If you secure the country and you get your farmers to go back, you deal with the issue of inflation because more food will come from the farms and everything and food inflation will go down. And that skates going down of all your inflation. You deal with rule of law and law and order. That's where you fight corruption. And you create a regressive environment. Policy, consistency of policy that will drive investment and make the whole place work. That is what will be that is also. When we say we're going to move the country from consumption to production, it is simple. The country is not producing anything. That's why you're selling money home. The country, a huge country. And he's not doing anything. What they're doing, I was talking with the prominent Nigerian this morning, 
the heartbeat after that he said to her, I said to him, there's no good. I was not for this thing. And people say they can't understand this consumption to production. None of us are both of us have been in life to say, what is your country producing? What are they doing? I will export the country of 200 million people. I will export last year was 18.9 trillion naira, which if you use the official rate is 47 billion dollars. If you use the current rate, the real rate of naira is about 30 billion dollars. That is totally unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. A country of honey. 200 million. 30 million. A total export. If I want to compare it with the first world, I compare it with the first world, I compare it with the third world. If you compare it with a country like Netherlands, Netherlands. Netherlands is a country. Nigeria is a country with 200 and 10 million people. Living on 923,000 square kilometers of land. Netherlands is a country you might not swallow of 33,000 square kilometers. So if we might not slant size of Nigeria for Netherlands, you have 880,000 remaining. Netherlands has a population of 17.5 million. 17.3 actually, but call it 17.5. So if you might not see from Nigeria, which some say is 215, so I say, Sora, you still have about 190 something people remaining. Fact, you should have about 200 remaining. Because we're up to 220. For Netherlands, Netherlands total export last year was over 600 billion dollars. So a country with 200 and 15 or 220 million will not do 5% of what 17 million people did. Living on almost how many times their life? In fact, the, the particular state in Nigeria, Niger State, is 76.3 thousand square kilometers of land. Niger State is two and a half times the size of Netherlands. Just one state. Very fertile land. They have not done anything for themselves. They are waiting to share from the little money that comes from oil. Netherlands last year exported agricultural goods of 120 billion, over 120 billion dollars. Netherlands earns about, Niger State earns from oil about 4 billion naira. Four billion naira a month, multiplied by twelve, about fifty billion. If they had fed themselves and they spent one percent of one land did, it would be one point two billion dollars. If you multiply the real rate of naira, it's about seven hundred and fifty billion naira, which is about five times their budget. But they are waiting to share more and more. They cannot continue. If you compare the third world countries, you go to Vietnam. Vietnam total population is about 100 million. Their land space is 331,000, a third of Nigeria. They live in a third of Nigeria, just of land size. And their population is 50%. And their total export last year over 300 billion. So Nigeria only did, this is the third world country. Nigeria, in terms of railway, which I said if you use the our export official, 47 billion dollars. The real 
rate of Naira is about 30. So we could only do 10% of what Vietnam did. This is a dead war country that comes. They didn't export natural goods. They didn't export anything. What Netherlands exported was manufactured goods. They, they exported electronics, 60 something billion. Clothing, 32 billion. They did twice what we did for more, we do for more for insulting clothing. What is insulting clothing? In our bank, can we not? But we are busy sharing money from money. They have transported food, food, food. <coughs> Products. That's shoes and everything. They need more than we need money. You can go the list anywhere. This is very The same thing you can talk about Malaysia. Malaysia is 329,000 square kilometers with about 30 million people, doing about 300 billion exports a year. So what is wrong with us? Because we're busy, you're sending money home to people to eat. You earn money here without working. No way. <laughs> if you ever set a couple here, uh, a pound here, without working, you been jail. <laughs> so when we talk about production, the country must be productive. And what does it take to make it productive? It's a simple thing. <laughs> By that we stop corruption, like I said in North Korea yesterday. Any country where people who are in political office, like myself, is richer than people who are business people. The country will collapse. You can't have wealth without an enterprise. Anybody you hear that is rich in this Manchester, you know what he's doing for a living. You cannot be rich without anybody knowing what you're doing. In Nigeria, people are rich without having a daytime job, without having a factory, without having an office. What do you do? Nobody knows. Peter Obi is busy here talking to everybody. Else. And when he wins the election, he buys the best house in Manchester. And where I will blame Nigeria is that some of you collude with all of us. Because if you really going to show it to us, if I come to Manchester now and buy the biggest house tomorrow, all of you will come there. I call the Bishop. I say, Bishop, come and pray. Do this. And be housewoman. Everybody is there. The Bishop is saying, God bless him to whoever I go to, he can multiply it.
only 5,000. The second biggest economy in Africa is South Africa. 60 million people, it generates a total of 50,000. And in the last one, two months, the president of South Africa, Stephen Raposa, has declared emergency in power and said that every South African can generate up to 100 megawatts without license. Somebody who is generating 50,000 declared emergency. Somebody who is generating 5,000. Why do you think you're going to go? But if you be quiet, because why? It leads to the confusion. That's where I'm stuck. My dear people, especially the youths, and when I talk to the youths, I'm talking to the parents here, yeah, to go back and take their youths, we have only one job. The election is here. I've said it now, I've said in the end, it's not going to be about ethnicity. No ethnic group buys bread cheap. No ethnic group in Nigeria of unimportant electricity. Neither in the north or in the south. No ethnic group is more secure. If you go there, there's a problem in Kastana, there's a problem in Kaduna, there's a problem in Enugu, there's a problem in Niger, there's a problem everywhere. So, no ethnic group will tell you they are better. So it's not about tribe. Please, it's not about religion. Muslims don't buy food cheaper, neither do Christians buy food cheaper. And I've always said every day, I'm a Christian, go to Dubai. The Catholic church in Dubai is the land and the church was built by any of Dubai. It's described in the wall, it comes there to worship. So it has nothing to do with the religion. It's ethnic manipulation. It's not that everybody's torn. This is the of Nigerians.
Frankreich. Thank you, Your Excellency, for joining us today in Manchester. Um, we're part of the House to House uh, group here, who uh, the lady sat next to me, Kate, explained earlier about our works in Nigeria. Um, over the couple of weeks or months since uh, you, de well, I say months since you declared your interest in being uh, the president, we have been working with quite a lot of people and convincing them to join the Obidati movement that we've uh, created here in Manchester. One of the things they, the people, especially the enlightened neutrals, should I call them, in Manchester, one of the questions they always ask me is, um, what are your policies? Where's your manifesto? You know, it's, it's, it's nice to hear the, 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 the points you make and everything. But they want, we, they want detailed policy. Uh, and I, for one as well, uh, obviously, in order to sell you to my fellow Nigerians, and to be able to generate the money that we need to do the work in Nigeria, um, things like this and details like that will be quite helpful. Thanks. No, you More questions you before? Okay. Um, Sorry, what's the name again there? Before the doctor, she's shown her interest, please. Uh, hello. Hi. My name is Phyllis. I'm 19 years old. I'm a second year student at London School of Economics. My question is, uh, what do you think about the younger generation of Nigerians growing up in the Western world um, can do to, better in, to the betterment of Nigeria or their role in the country's future? Um, doctor. Thank you very much. All protocols duly observed. Thank you, Your Excellency, for making our time to interact with us today. Um, I have a question. Um, first of all, I'm Udo Gade, a um, coordinator of Doctors for Peace of the United Kingdom. We are doing some medical outreaches in the northeastern part of Nigeria, as recommended by Dr. Doyle Kupe. Um, at the moment, we've invaded Tarava, we've done medical outreaches and slash sterilization campaign across the 16 local governments of Tarava State. And we are still looking at invading Father State, Bauchi, um, Adamawa, and Gombe are in the pipeline. My, however, my question at the moment is first of all, if I ask my question, you know, most of the times we see government officials, past presidents, leaving Nigeria seeking health care outside the country, which is quite embarrassing. To the Nigerians and to the, and to the doctors trained in Nigeria. Most doctors are living in Nigeria, chasing you know, greener pastures outside the country. Yes. I am a doctor. I was trained in Nigeria. You know, and I desire, I never had the ambition at any point to leave Nigeria, but circumstances beyond my control made me leave Nigeria. And here I am at the moment. And I have the passion to go back home to, you know, and um, build our nation. Many of, many of my colleagues here have the passion we want to come back home, but we need things to be put right to come back. My question now is, with your excellency, first, first question is, what are you going to do to curb this, um, you know, government officials leaving Nigeria, leaving our health sector in, you know, in shambles and dilapidated states and going to seek health care abroad? That's the first question. Second question is, what are you going to do to reduce the brain drain? to stop the brain drain from Nigeria, especially from the professionals. And the final question is, final question is, Your Excellency, we are not, we are wishing you longevity. We are not saying, we are not wishing you, you know, ill health or anything, but should in case you fall ill, are you going to leave Nigeria to go abroad to seek health care, or are you going to seek health care from the professionals in our country? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, doctor. My Cambridge is now with us. You know, I only don't ask one question. Um, we, we're going to just have two more questions. And we, it's going to be one male, one female. So I'm going to have one male now, and I'll go to a female. So please bear with me. All right. Hello. From, from the back. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Hello, everybody. 
Your Excellency, welcome to Manchester. Um, Lord of us here, we're very happy to see you and very uh, encouraged by your presence. One of the things somebody asked here was about a mandate, you know, a plan. Now, that's very, very difficult to be able to uh, implement in your first few months if you do, and hopefully you will be. But I'm more concerned about sustainability. In the past, there's always been this, well, here's our mandate, this is what we're going to do, all these parenting promises I have to say. What makes you a different candidate? How can we be confident that whatever building blocks you put in place, that these are sustainable over a long period of time? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to give the mic to, okay, you, uh, but before you ask your own question, let me be selfish myself. I have a question to ask. And I think um, I should uh, be allowed to do that, yeah? Um, it's like, sir. Every generation depends on the youth to build a formidable future. Every generation relies on the youth to build leadership. What are the things you're going to put in place to facilitate and enhance the youth to be able to take over the man mantle of leadership after your time, sir. It's quite instructive that the youth understand that the future no longer belongs to the older generation. The future is ours. So, the question. Are you a youth? Okay. Thank you, Excellency. <laughs> this question is from my nine-year-old son, who knew I was coming, and he had lots of questions, but I'll just go with you. He's, he wants to know how you will ensure that his peers in Nigeria gets the quality of education that he does here as well. Secondly, he, he's been to Nigeria a couple of times and he, like his dad, always watch what's happening. And he wants to know how the leaders will be kept um, to their promises to deliver what they are meant to deliver and not just look out for, him, for themselves. And finally, given his age, he wants to know your thoughts on climate and how you're going to help keep climate change from Nigeria. Thank you so much. Hello, let me start by... Let me start by... Uh, let me start asking for the last question. But I will only answer one of your questions. The other one I will, I will probably tell you that this. When it comes to the issue of climate change, let me be very quick. There's a protocol for climate change. And I assure you that we will follow the protocol that is already established. We're not going to do, change from what Nigeria is already signature to. We'll just follow what they've already signed. And where we feel we are there is not suitable, because if we look at it, from the Ukraine war, some of the signatures are also trying to adjust a little bit. So if we are going to adjust, we'll still go back to having been signatory to it to see that we adjust within the protocols. So that one is given. On the quality of education, let me tell you, three things is what develops the society. Because when we talk about societal development, it's held on biggest measure of it is human development index. Human development index is three items. Life is expectancy which you call human life expectancy is health. Number two is education, which I consider number one, even when it's number two. The more educated society is, the better the society. Yes. And you can't talk about building physical infrastructure without building the human infrastructure. So for me, education is everything. And I've demonstrated it as a government. You can go and see what we did in education. Yes. So, thank you so 
God, we are going to do that. And I'm committed to it. On you to that sheep, I agree and I say it every day that the youth should be part of this. Let me tell you and assure you, when we talk about diversity and everything, the most critical thing I want us to achieve is the inclusiveness of women and youth in government. This is one government that if we, if we succeed, when we succeed, women and youth will be visibly represented. We need them in the government. Sustainability of governance Thank you. We'll do that. We'll ensure. Youth, and when I mean youth, youth. When I mean women, women. <laughs> so, let me tell you, man, let me tell you, if you ensure free and fair election, if you stop transactional government, our commitment is to have purposeful leadership that will be less transactional. By then we deal with all this process and make government less attractive, I have free and fair election. I can assure you, sustaining your policies and everything becomes easy. Let me give you an example. In Manchester here, if there's a road that they say is one way, will any of you drive on it? No. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's not only police that will stop you. The people who refuse. So, when you talk about sustainability of what you do, it's not about the people. If you elect, elect a councillor, a council chairman, if you elect somebody today, mayor of Manchester, tomorrow, he buys a new house. Do you know what will happen? Go in jail. No. That's man. Also, the investigation will start to know where he got the money. Is a new Prime Minister of UK today and tomorrow you buy a house. Everybody will come outside you. In Nigeria, is the opposite. We celebrate teams. <laughs> so, so celebrity is very easy. Dr. Asuna will leave Nigeria for medical treatment. Doctor, I want you to ask your colleague in Nigeria. I built the teaching hospital from scratch. And as governor, I was attending them. And it will shock you. I've never been sick, I get tired. That's the <laughs>
Two young men walked in. They are black people. One is from Imo, one is from Ondo. And so even in the UK, I met people who did the procedure were listening. So I assure you that I'll try. Brain drain for me is not a problem. What me? It will be a brain gain. Because when we fix Nigeria, all the other things you learn from here, guess what? You bring them back. Yes. India, India and China are changed today. You know what happened? Because the people that went abroad came back and changed it. You are the first investors we'll get when we start building a better Nigeria. You are the one going to attract the foreign investor because the day white man see you going back to invest in Nigeria, they'll follow you. That's so. That's what they did with India. I live today, I live with somebody in the, when I live, my neighbor in the UK, my neighbor, my next door neighbor. This is my house, this is that. Built their factory in India. I was exporting goods in the UK. The factory was employing his people. They were living well, and he was making money here. That's what I want to do. That's what I want us to do. Because today, if you send money for them to build factory, they'll eat it. <laughs> if you send it to only the build house, they'll eat it. <laughs> so we must reverse it. Yes. So the brain game will be medical tourism by officials of government. We will fix it. We will make sure. I won't tell you if nobody will come here for treatment. No. But it must be on a federal basis. So we have exhausted those who can do it locally. And if no, and you will see it. I don't even know where they'll get the money to go in. Let me 
tell you, the thorn can be first, but we are the thorn reckoning. According to them, yes. No, I mean factual. Before now, the party that is known is APC PDP. So in terms of mission, we are now one of the one of the three. So let's be factual. Because it's important to learn from that. Now, well, let me tell you about my first one. Let me tell you about written promises. Then your government is coming in. Nigeria is not devoid. Or Nigeria is not lacking in manifestos of people in the past. In fact, let me tell you, if you decide to look at manifestos of politicians, presidential candidates in Nigeria, the list can see this. <laughs> if you decide to look at little policies, documented ideas in Nigeria, you will feel this more. What is lacking is two things. Number one is that the weakness of the institution to be able to deliver this and the political way. And I'm number three. What we are going to tell you, remember what I said, all of us, some even speak better English. Some will even qualify themselves more than Peter. All of us are going to come with sweet thoughts, promising something that is fantastic. What this election is all about is about who can we trust that what he's saying he will do. <laughs> so if you have just said me and said, I'm going to fight corruption. And I say it every day. Fighting corruption is easy. I'm going to fight corruption. People have asked me how. If what I want you to do is Okay, he was governor of Anambra State. Can we go to Anambra State? When you hear about corruption perception index, it's measured on one thing. It's measured on management of public resources. Nothing else. How did he share government post? Because that's corruption. They put in, yes. the major part of corruption. How did we share the land? He was governor in charge of land. Who and who got the land? How many did he get? How did he manage the resources? Because I said we are applying for a job. That's how you determine what are we going to do. If he says he's going to fix the education and make it to be world class. What did he do with the last place where he was? If he says he's going to deal with health, if he says he's going to deal with this, let's go and see him. If he says he's going to cut cost of governance, because that's another problem we have. Huge physical rascality in cost of governance. I can tell you it costs more to keep a governor in Nigeria than to keep the British Prime Minister. And I know I've experimented it. And it's very simple. If they woke up tomorrow morning, on Monday morning, tomorrow in this country and see Louis with 530, he will be removed the next day. What of no confidence for being in 530? Five, five. Five. No, five. I'm not talking about 10. 10 is that he will not go back to the office. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's it. If they woke up tomorrow and see him going to Nigeria in a private jet, he has to be explained. Because there's British Airways that can fly into Abuja. And that's how it works. If Johnny woke up and see Chancellor in a private jet flying to Africa, 
the problem. So these are institutions. This is a country jamming per capita is about 40,000. Britain per capita is about the same thing, 400,000. But a country with less than 2,000 per capita is living at sea. So you can go on and on. So if anybody says I'm going to do this, forget about your commitment. My brother, I can hire the best of economists. They put anything. I'm here to talk to you. I didn't go today. No more. The more people are quarreling with me in Nigeria. They say don't put the best spokesperson. When people can pay here, they come to the spokesperson. No. You know Obama because Obama was talking to the people. You know this trust because when it comes to campaign, he will talk to you. In Nigeria, the presidential candidate has a spokesperson who is talking to the person. Why is he talking to two people? You should come and tell us what he's doing. I'm here in Manchester. Let people come to Manchester and talk to you people. Let them not send an agent tomorrow and you listen to them. And they do this stuff. You organize this. That's what it should be. I didn't call you the five star hotel and give you good friends because I'm not calling anybody in my So when somebody says I'm going to do this, and I challenge people, I've been done the governor and left office nine years ago. When I started being governor was 2006, because of my difficulties in starting being governor, I quarreled with everybody. As you know, but then everybody from House of Assembly to teachers in school, schools were shut down, to hospitals, doctors were strike, everybody was everybody because I was trying to bring a change. If you bring a change, there will be a problem with everybody because everybody lives up the old order. When they start to what I was doing, of course, you know, I was removed from office twice. I was in pain because nobody understood what this man was coming to do. But I started implementing MDG. Nigeria was a signatory to MDG in year 2000. It was MDG that allowed China to pull 409 million people out of poverty. Nigeria took the people into poverty within the same period. <laughs> but I started implementing MDG in 2008. Seven years after it started, by the time they finished in 2015, Brown was number one. Because we are number one in education. We are number one in health. And I can go, not say we want the best get price the first piece. I can go on and on and say what we want over the years. We did very well in terms of development. As at that time, we had the best road network. I didn't borrow one penny from anybody. Yes. yes. No the financial institution will ever say people, we borrowed one penny. The day I left office, I was not owing any contractor, supplier, who have executed his job one night. I was not owing salary. I cleared out the pension and gratuity. Yes, I wasn't owing anybody. And I left in three banks in Nigeria. The banks are still there. I left in Access Bank. $50 billion, over $10 billion. I left in Diamond Bank, $50 million, over $10 billion. I left in Fidelity Bank, over $50 million, over $10 billion. And I had investments in other facilities. And today, I'm the only to have I was as a governor, I signed when they brought the law for me to sign for my pension, I told them that nobody is entitled to anything. And I'm not saying that nobody bought me pure water. This bottle of water since I left nine years ago. Go and say it. So I came there. I have no land. No single land. Will you see that they are located to me directly and directly by Alhambra? And I signed over 10,000 CEO goals for that people. Nobody from my town was appointed a commissioner. 
And I can go, no OB, no money from my time. Because I was entrusted public wealth. I had to share the responsibility. And I served in other different areas. I was chairman of the Security and Exchange Commission. Go there and ask them whether they got me pure water. Yes. So if anybody says I'm going to fight corruption, let's know how you manage the last place. Yes. And left. Yes. I told somebody I'm going to fix education. I told somebody I'm going to fix education. I'm going to fix education. Because I moved to Aram State from 26 and 27 to number one. If you go to Anambra State when I was governor, no single school in Anambra State, every school had two buses. They have computers. They have internet. They have generator. Chimamanda said in two days ago, I was in Harvard on Thursday. I spoke at Harvard. Chimamanda said, when a young girl came to her and said, as a senior prefect, I had to do this so long. That she won't thought it was a joke. Yeah. Until the son showing her exchange of texts, two of us were exchanging. And I said to them, everybody, go and ask any senior prefect that was there when I was going yeah. They all had my phone number. Every senior prefect had my phone number. And I was interacting with them directly. As government. So don't tell me you're going to do this. Because you're applying for a job. Tell us what you did in the past. The job of a leader is to solve problems. The job of a leader is to be able to find solutions, not to blame. Nigeria, you vote people in, they start reminding you that when, when a comrade was there, that this, or that the comrade caused this problem, or that this was the cause it. No. If the past was doing well, who we'll hire you? We hired you because they're not doing well. We don't want you to remind us of the past. Because also, we hired you because those people who were there were not doing well. So that's why we hired you. So we didn't hire you to remind us what they did and what they didn't do. God did not give us eyes to look back. I want to give you a little So it will not be happening by manifesto. It will not happen by what? Manifesto. Leave it short, manifesto. Leave it short, written thing. I can bring this. So when people come and tell you, oh, Peter, we are looking for this. Let me tell you, we have manifesto. <laughs> but the real manifesto is this stuff. When I was campaign for Nova and Amber State, they would give me what the other people wrote. Five pages, 20, 30 pages. My own was one page. I will change school. You know? Well, I'll change school. I will do this. I will do this. They say this man is not serious. What is he talking? <laughs> I'm giving you the manifesto. To my mouth, what are you doing? <laughs> Naira. 
People have asked me, how are you going to manage collapsing rate of Naira? Naira is collapsing because you have, first of all, irresponsibility and you're not productive. Simple. Because you're printing money, people are stealing public money, people are paying any money from, from, uh, from subsidy without doing anything. When you have money that is not produce of hard work, chasing dollars, they will pay everything. That's what you have. Two, you are not transport. If you can't earn more dollars, you need to earn more dollars. I'm just giving you an example. If you double, if you triple Nigeria, if you move Nigeria down from earning, say, 50 billion dollars, to 100, 150 billion, which is the least you can do. You stabilize your currency. It's simple. It's not rocket science. Like I said, generating power is not rocket science. You can deal with it. You're burning gas. Today, Nigeria is so disadvantaged. So advantaged. Mm -hmm. Nigeria has about half the size of Russian gas reserve. Russia is generating every single month one billion, about one billion dollars every day. We call it even one one every every day. We call it even every month. Russia is several billions from gas. If we can earn what Russia generates every day today from gas, if we can earn ten percent of it today, we can change the world. Yes. What? 10% of it. We have half of the Amazon. And Europe is looking for it. It will shock you. If it is double their power generation from 20,000 to over 55,000 to over 50,000, about 55,000 between 2015 and 2020. So it's not a case it will shock that Egypt is about to export power to Europe. That is the change. This, we're not talking about first world now. Everything that we have, and we have talents, energy that can do this. So if anybody says to you, write grossing manifest, let us do If I say I'm going to cut cost of governance, I want to now tell you about manifest very well. Because they're critical component. Somebody said this is the most important thing here. If somebody said I'm going to cut costs of governance, ask him where he cut it before. Because they've gone before. I can tell you. Go and ask anybody. I've gone on one of last days. I free the economy for eight years. I carry my box. I go everything. I never, I never went to a picture with my ADC. Everybody knew. As long as one of us said, I shut down. Our lodge in Abuja. I said, Go on, one of brothers in Abuja. I shut it down. I shut down all our guest houses. When I was looking for money to put in education, because when I came in, 30% of our budget was almost going to the office of government. I reversed it. I said, 10% more go to education. 10%. By the time I finished everything I was doing, I was left with only 4%. I said, I'm going to deal with it. And you could see it. I was the only one who operated with that office of first lady because nobody, I and my wife, everybody knows, are so close that you can't imagine it. But nobody is looking for my wife. <laughs> 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 since, since we are married in a while, isn't it? So I'm, I'm the one who they voted for. So they voted for two of us. So two of us decided to run one office. In the half, Another convoy of 20 persons creating additional confusion when they give me an confusion. Until today, I can tell you as I'm coming here today, the person who was in my car knows how many times me and my wife. She knows I'm here. She will even tell me, you're tired, better sleep in Manchester, come back tomorrow, this is it, do this, of course, you know, you know, this thing you're doing, but you what? It's me that you saw here now. So why create another office when they are working with a routine of service to cut costs? So if somebody said I'm going to do it, ask him. 
last time you read it. So the manifesto is what I'm telling you, you're taping it now. Yes. Sister one. Yes. Not written one. This is the one that will be obeyed. Yes. That one, when you look at it, you say, ah, where is it written? Who wrote this thing? It's the party. Then they will blame the special chairman. You know that they wrote it. Or they blame her. I said they wrote it. I didn't know when they wrote it. Is that the one that they tell us today? Yeah. FBC says one, one dollar to one dollar. Yes, now imagine they said they never did it. But it's not a problem. Now let everybody who is contesting come and say, say it. Put it in man. We document it. So that even if it doesn't achieve it, we don't we might not get hundred percent results, but we will put hundred percent effort. I Peter is telling the youth and Nigerians, hold me responsible. I will be part. I will be part. I'm not going to delegate it. I visited every single school in Anambra State. I'm going to be for the front. If I say I'm going to solve the security problem, I will be in charge. The last boss is my desk. I'm not going to dedicate anybody. And I'm not going to be blame anybody for the failure. I'll take responsibility for it. That's what we're looking for. And this job is a job that requires every of time. So thank you for this. I assure you of my commitment. I assure you of everything. We take only two more questions. So we can end. All right. All right. Uh, hold on. Um, our principal talked about question. Our principal talked about question. But before we go to the question, with all due respect to His Excellency, um, Mr. Peter Obi, we have a candidate from the Labour Party News here and is cont actually contesting for the House of Representatives in Nigeria. He was actually supposed to travel today to Lagos. But because he heard of your coming here, he decided to come. I want to give him a few moments to talk about it. Thank you. Thank you, now. Uh, my name is, uh, thank you to our uh, uh, party chairman and to the contestant. My name is Ilela Bai Bamedeli. I just had to write this down. Campaigning under the same Labour Party for the House of Representatives in Oluyole, Ibadan Yossi. For the second time, I actually contested in 2019 and I came fifth out of 26 candidates. Uh, like I did, without a structure, it was only myself and Atai Shesodik, the Guba candidate there, who is now the party chairman. So I'm just writing, just asking these questions because we are contesting to win and presently we are winning, but to sustain that, it's quite disappointing to see the trend of, uh, like uh, he mentioned earlier, the trend of religious and ethnic sentiment that is being used by other two parties to campaign in Nigeria. But it still boils down to the strength of canvassing. Yeah, I know there are a lot of support groups. What's the input of the party and even the support groups in enlightening our people back home on religious and ethnic sentiment because they are not as informed beyond uh, that level due to lack of exposure and poverty as we are that are here. So because personally, apart from the input that I have put at the local government, is a struggling effort because of the population of people that we have on our side currently are vastly the youth. We need the older ones as well. Are there plans on canvassing and to do more in, uh, at the grassroots level? Uh, because the, the support groups, uh, the question goes to the support groups, the party and the presidential candidates should strengthen and come up with viable strategies on winning by enlightening our people against the religious and ethnic sentiments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, they said if you are not tested, you I have to be tested. Good evening, Your Excellency. Members of the High Temple. All protocols really observed. My name is Chidebele Honor. Your Excellency. Your Excellency, it has been uh, 
eight years that I've been longing to thank you, to say thank you for what you did to my family. Um, my wife is a beneficiary of the one million naira um, academic excellence award that you gave us in 2014. That's, that shows how you reward academic excellence. That shows the value you have for academics. So I thank you so much, and I, I know that when you get there, you will do more.
Delta, Delta, there's issues in, in Southwest, there's a rural group, in everything. Let me tell you, to govern in a democracy is by consultation, dialogue, and agreements. You govern by consensus. Every agitator, I'll talk to you first. There's agitators everywhere in the world. Give me my house. Let's go. 